G'day guys, how are we all? Hope we're all doing well. Picking some locks and keeping it bloody legal. And uh, the other night I had to re-pin four Lockwood 334B45s and a 334 or and one 334M45. Uh, so they all opened up off the one key, which isn't actually this one. For a mate of ours, he wanted some padlocks that are re-keyable, that are pretty decent locks to um, lock up all his tools and stuff in the machine shop. And he asked if I could repin them, and yeah, had a fun <laughs> hour repinning all them for him, up to the one with the most decent bidding, and yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty good bidding on that one. Um, I kept old keys. Where did I put them? So I kept all the old keys from the padlocks, over 300 bucks worth um, padlocks he got, and kept all them so I can, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed in some of Lockwood's keys, um, you know, some of them are pretty good, and then other ones are, you know, that one's pretty good, you know, all those then go high at the back, but then you get... You know, that one's pretty bloody good, but two highs at the front, low right in the middle, and two highs at the back. You know, these will go well for some uh, challenge locks. But, I also got to, afterwards, after I repinned all them, he bought a brand new Master Lock key safe. It was one of the press button ones, and asked if I could decode it, and he set a special code for it. And, um... He asked if I could work out a way to decode it. After about five minutes, I got the bloody thing open. <laughs> so it was one of the push button ones, and it was really weird the way it works. But an open is an open, as they say. But anyway, to today I've got this beautiful little Lockwood Asa Abloy 334C45, which stands for closed shackle. And I actually quite like these closed shackle ones. I mean, not only are these Lockwoods ball bearings, so they can't be shimmed, but the aid of, you know, being a closed shackle, can't be shimmed if it has locking pulls as well. Um, and by the time you get some chain or whatever you're locking it onto through there, you haven't really got anywhere to cut. So quite like these. But this is the one my kids got me for Christmas. And now that I'm back picking, I thought I'd give it a go. And it's not too bad. Nah. It's actually some pretty... Ordinary bidding, isn't it? Go high, right down to low. So, anyway, she does work beautifully. And what the lock would say about this? They give it a security rating of 7 and a corrosion resistance of 4. Double ball locking, high cut resistant, 8.7mm hardened, molly Okay, I've just had a mental blank. Uh, Molly Bedium, Bedium, whatever it is, <laughs> steel shackle. I've just had a complete and utter bloody mental blank. Um, so what's this? Seven, high to maximum security. Yeah. Extreme weather, double locking, re cable cylinder, impact resistant, saw resistant, cut resistant, drill resistant, and torque resistant. So she's not too bad. Let's check out its picking security I will admit I have picked this thing once which was the other night while I was waiting for these other locks uh, to repin arrive it's kind of nice having you know 300 bucks worth of uh, Lockwood 334 in my hands <laughs> anyway alright I need a top of the keyway tensioner I'm going to grab the 50 thousandths heavy bar from Sparrows fit in there nicely and let's go the euro hook from sparrows as well on 25,000 since the c4 keyway nice and wide open the other thing with this one is it has a little bit of a uh, 
spring loaded core so you have to put a little bit it's a little bit weird to actually start to pick because a lot of them that I've picked don't have that but you know this does contain the lovable as alloy spools those very narrow wasted spools hope not I had a black texture here I could put a mark on the uh, still on the uh, core to show you any fault set movement this one will do so let's sorry put the tension I need on just to overcome that spring put a mark about there maybe one there one there and one there so you can kind of see hopefully So you can kind of see how much of how much movement's actually in these cores. So there's a little bit of spring tension. Anyway, I was reading the post on Facebook the other day. Someone was saying that how much tension they were surprised how much tension they had to use on one of these. And I haven't found you have to use super heavy tension. I use very very light tension when picking these pin three little click pin two I think I fell off pin two there we go this lock's moving tighten them up a bit more Nothing off one. All right, pin two, come back down. You can kind of see that counter rotation. Still nothing off one. Let's go up the back. Back. All right, pin four, counter. All right, lost my fault set. There it goes back again. Pin two is back down. Keep sliding off him. Check pin one. Leave that to pin one set. So now I'm just going through feeling for any counter rotation. I just had somebody drop. I'm not getting any counter rotation or any feedback off any of these pins. All right, all right. pin five. Got him set. All right, pin one again. Come on. Definitely pin one set. All right, got my fault set back off four. So you must have just slipped down. All right, you can see that counter.
So yeah, this lock out of all of the uh, 334s I've picked is the one that actually gives me a little bit of a play around. Um, you know, that massive highest rated giant monoblock. There we go. That was pin four. Here's the uh, one that's a little bit tricky. Um, and definitely got an open. Yeah, out of all of them, out of the three, three, fours I've picked, this one's actually the one that gives me the most amount of uh, trickery. So anyway, that's unlocked. We can lock him back up. I don't know why. You've just got to be very, very careful on that last pin. Um, oh, pin four. It jumps between four and one constantly. It is really weird. And it don't matter which order you pick them in either. Because um, I did that last time. I picked it. All right, let's go this thing. from uh, turn it too far and just in here is that little pin that if you take it out and set it in over that side it uh, turns your locket into key retaining or it might be still on that side I think I haven't actually been a while since I've done it um, turn one of those key retaining easiest way to tell when we oh undo this we can have a look sit that there yep so it sits on that side you can see there's a little lip so you take a little pin out the back and then you sit it in on that side sit him in there like that and that then turns your padlock into a key retaining lock So here we go. So all of our key pins are standard pins and we have all spools for the drivers. Let me grab one up. Oh, let's grab number four. So yeah, what Lockwoods are, come on camera, focus, famous for is these very, very narrow lipped spools that can be quite tricky to actually pick. And yeah. As I said, I was reading the guy uses um, saying how to use heavier tension than he expected, but I don't. As you saw I use very, very light tension when it comes to these. But there we go. So, as always, always follow codes, keep lock spot legal, you know. Don't go do anything stupid. Don't forget, down the bottom over this side is that little notif uh, little subscribe button. That's the one. And over this side is that bell shaped weird looking icon and the way YouTube runs their stuff now you've got to hit both of them that way you can stay up to date as soon as I upload a video you'll be one of the first to know as you know I try to upload two to three to four videos per week depending on work and everything else that I've got going on don't forget to come and join us on Discord extraordinary league of pickers links in the description don't forget there's also Dark Arts lock picking merch available now and there's a link to that in the description as well don't forget if you want to get some awesome equipment like I use uh, like the picks and Stuff like this, 
at very affordable and competitive prices. Don't forget to check out locksmithstoolbox.com. They're an awesome Australian company, and as you know, that's where I get most of my lockpicking equipment from. If you want to get in contact with me, contact me through any social medias, Discord, or send us an email, darkartslockpicking at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you if you like what you see. Don't forget thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. And until next time, cheers, guys.